Warning, this presentation is not for the sensitive. If you are of a squeamish or insecure disposition, please stop watching now. What you are about to hear are quotes from the ancient world. They are taken from the greatest authors of European and Middle Eastern antiquity. Make no mistake, these are all giants of the distant past, from philosophers to historians and even as in the case of one or two instances, divinity. Shocking as it may sound, one of the texts you are about to hear from is integral to two of the largest faiths in the modern world. And like the rest of the antiquated sources you will be hearing from, it also says outrageous things about black Africans in antiquity. Some of today's historians have even suggested these texts might offer the answer as to the origin of modern racism. If you are a black individual, please understand this is a video about historic facts. There is only one approach to facts, acceptance. And now for the past masters. Where the south declines towards the setting sun lies the country called Ethiopia, the last inhabited land in that direction. Their gold is obtained in great plenty. Huge elephants abound with wild trees of all sorts and ebony. And the men, the men are taller, handsomer and longer lived than anywhere else. Ancient Greek historian Herodotus writing in the histories circa 500 BC, translated by George Rawlinson. When Cambyses, the king of Persia, had made up his mind that the spies should go, he forthwith sent to Elephantine for certain of the coast dwellers who were acquainted with the Ethiopian tongue. As soon as the coast dwellers arrived from Elephantine, Cambyses having told them what they were to say, forthwith dispatched them into Ethiopia with these following gifts. A purple robe, a gold chain for the neck, armlets, an alabaster box of myrrh, and a cask of palm wine. The Ethiopians to whom this embassy was sent are said to be the tallest and handsomest men in the whole world. In their customs, they differ greatly from the rest of mankind. The coast dwellers on reaching this people delivered the gifts to the king of the Ethiopians and spoke as follows. Cambyses, king of the Persians, anxious to become thy ally and sworn friend, has sent us to uh, converse with thee, and to bear thee the gifts thou seest, which are the things wherein he himself delights the most. Hereon the Ethiopian who knew they came as spies made answer. The king of the Persians sent you not with these gifts, because he much desired to become my sworn friend. Nor is the account which ye give of yourselves true, for ye are come to search out my kingdom. Also your king is not a just man, for where he so, he would not have coveted a land which is not his own, nor brought slavery on a people who never did him any wrong. Bear him this bow, and say, The king of the Ethiops thus advises the king of the Persians, when the Persians can pull a bow of this strength thus easily, then let him come with an army of superior strength against the long-lived Ethiopians. Till then, let him thank the gods that they have not put it into the heart of the sons of the Ethiops to covet countries which do not belong to them. Once again, ancient Greek historian Herodotus in his histories circa 500 BC, as translated by George Rawlinson. Certainly, the Ethiopians are loved by the gods because of justice. This even Homer indicates in the first book by the fact that Jupiter frequently leaves heaven and feasts with them because of their justice and the equity of their customs. For the Ethiopians are said to be the justest men and for that reason, the gods leave their abode frequently to visit them. Roman author Lactantius Placidus, writing between 350 to 400 AD. Ethiopia was the first established country on earth, and the Ethiopians were the first to set up the worship of the gods and to establish laws. Stephanus of Byzantium, writing in the 6th century AD. 
Now the Ethiopians, as historians relate, were the first of all men, and the proofs of this statement, they say, are manifest. They say that they were the first to be taught to honor the gods and to hold sacrifices and processions and festivals and the other rites by which men honor the deities, and that, in consequence, their piety has been published abroad among all men, and it is generally held that the sacrifices practiced among the Ethiopians are those which are the most pleasing to heaven. They say also that the Egyptians are colonists sent out by the Ethiopians, Osiris having been the leader of the colony. Greco-Roman writer Diodorus Siculus in a library of history, circa 80 to 20 BC. Woe to the land of whirring wings along the rivers of Cush, which sends envoys by sea in papyrus boats over the water. Go, swift messengers, to a people tall and smooth-skinned, to a people fed far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. The Book of Isaiah chapter 18 verses 1 and 2, circa 8th century BC, as translated by the New International Version. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? saith the Lord. Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaftor, and the Syrians from Kerr? The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 7, circa 8th century BC, as translated by the King James Version. As you've just heard, Ethiopia and Kush were generic labels given to people of African descent in the ancient past. Apparently, the writers of the classical world view these people with a mix of awe, wonder and reverence. Racism? At least as a widespread phenomenon within the European world, this would not come till much later. Why it came? Some have suggested a convenient forgetfulness of the past necessary to create guilt-free minds while pillaging the black man's land, plundering his treasures and exploiting him as a non-consensual human resource. If true, then to listen to these quotes, one cannot help but wonder if envy was not also one of these reasons. We may never know. The secrets of men's hearts will remain secret until the appointed time. But if you've learned something from this video, then go ahead and click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content exposing the hidden glories of a black past. Thanks goes out to our members, scholars, soldiers and sages of the Trill Black Nation, with special thanks to the sage of the Trill Black Council, Black Rampage 2. Cast in your lot today with these illustrious producers by clicking the join button below and help the Trill Black Nation spread the truth of the Black Past far and wide, from Kush to Compton, no doubt.